you know about the lymph node, you know about the lymphatics. So uh, in the human body there are around 800 lymph nodes a total and of that, of that 800, 300 lymph nodes are located in the head and neck area. And this malignancies will follow a predictive pattern or predictive spread along the lymphatics. And so the knowledge of the lymphatics or the lymph nodes of the head and neck is very important both clinically and for uh, examination purpose. For uh, undergraduates, usually an uh, asked question is around about the Valdez ring to draw and label and also it is asked as a short note. And also for the postgraduate students, the lymphatics of the head and neck can be asked as a full essay also. So this class is on lymph nodes of head and neck area. Lymph nodes of head and neck and uh, I will be explaining about the different groups of lymph nodes, uh, superficial deep and also the Valdez ring, the outer ring and the inner ring and also the levels of lymph nodes in the head and neck area and the uh, efferent or the draining area of each group of lymph node. So uh, broadly they are divided into or the lymph nodes of the head and neck area are divided into superficial and deep and I will again divide that into an innermost or the Valdez ring. Okay, so this actually the uh, superficial lymphatics will form a regional collar from below the chin up to the back of neck. And they will drain or they will perforate the cervical fascia uh, and they will drain into the, this. This is a picture of the deep group. The superficial lie along the external jugular chain. Okay, this is internal jugular and external jugular will come around here. So the superficial are lying around the external jugular vein. And the important one is the lateral cervical group among the superficial. So they will perforate the cervical fascia and will drain into the deep nodes. So when the superficial nodes are involved in malignancy, they will require skin resection along with an extended neck resection. That is the importance of the superficial nodes. Okay. And then, what about the deep group? That is very important. There are uh, different levels of nodes and also different groups of uh, lymph nodes. And these deep uh, lymphatics and also the lymph nodes are mostly found around the facial condensations. That means what? Uh, facial condensations along the blood vessels, nerves and muscles and they mainly drain the uh, all of our areas that is the oral cavity, oropharynx, nasopharynx, then hypopharynx and also larynx. Okay and efferent from that, so efferent from all these areas and the efferent from the uh, deep node join to form the jugular trunk and they will drain into thoracic duct and also the right lymphatic duct. Okay, so they will form the jugular trunk that is the efferent. Afferents are from this all these areas and efferent from the jugular trunk and again drain to left side thoracic duct and right lymphatic duct. Okay, then, so uh, I told about the efferent system and what about the afferent or what are the different uh, group of deep uh, group of lymph nodes. The first group is a submental. Okay. Digastric, anterior belly and the posterior belly. This is a hyoid bone and uh, the thyroid cartilage, thyroid gland and the uh, trachea. So, uh, submental groups are in the submental triangle between the two anterior belly of digastric below the chin in the anterior triangle. Okay. So, that is submental. That is group 1. And from where the drains, it is situated here. So, obviously, the draining will be the anterior floor of mouth and also a wedge area from the gums and the lower teeth. Okay. So, that is submental. And the second group is the here. What is that? Submandibular. Okay, this is a submandibular group. And
and you know the submandibular triangle and what is there in the submandibular triangle it is the uh, submandibular gland so again the submandibular are divided into six groups in relation with two important structures in the submandibular triangle so one is the submandibular gland and second one is a facial vessel okay so in relation to that so i said there is submandibular gland and also there is facial vessel right so in relation to submandibular gland there are three groups of uh, lymph nodes pre intra and retroglandular okay so preglandular intraglandular and retroglandular in front of gland inside the gland and behind the gland pre uh intra and retro okay like that in relation to the facial vessel again there is prevascular retrovascular and deep nodes okay so all together there are six groups of submandibular lymph nodes what are the area of drainage or efferents come from you can roughly tell it as a line drawn from uh, the medial angle of eye to the uh, angle of mandible this line okay so area below this a line passing through the medial angle of eye to the angle of mandible and this area what are they uh, that is the uh, oral cavity oropharynx the tongue then the gums and also the ethmoid maxillary sinuses uh then the anterior and the lateral wall of nose all these areas will drain into um submandibular gland and from that the efferent will go to the uh, upper deep cervical lymph nodes okay upper deep cervical from here to the upper deep cervical and in relation to that comes two group of lymph nodes one is a jugulodigastric lymph node okay i'll write in uh, blue only jugulo digastric and here comes the jugulo omohyoid what is this jugulo digastric lymph node jugulo digastric lymph node is the um, node of tonsil okay so actually it is very important you will see enlarged jugulo digastric lymph node in all cases of a chronic tonsillitis and they are situated just below and behind the angle of mandible okay it's actually it's a part of upper deep cervical and it is situated below and behind the angle of mandible and this is the node of tonsil and jugulo omohyoid is the node of tongue jugulo omohyoid node of tongue it is situated over the omohyoid at the um, tendon of mid, mid, middle tendon of the uh, omohyoid muscle and jugulo omohyoid node is the node of ton, uh, tongue jugulo digastric node of tonsil and jugulo omohyoid is the specific node of tongue okay next important group of uh, deep lymph node is that around the jugular chain okay so i already told the submandibular submandibular and next is uh, around the uh, jugular chain that is around the internal jugular vein okay so they are seen around the this is the internal jugular vein and this nodes are seen around the internal jugular vein or sometime in the carotid sheath itself and they are seen on anterior posterior and lateral to the internal jugular vein so again they are divided into these groups are divided into um, upper deep cervical middle deep cervical and lower deep cervical okay so Uh, upper deep cervical middle deep cervical and uh, lower deep cervical lymph node so the upper deep cervical extend from the skull base up to the carotid bifurcation okay so along with internal jugular vein goes the carotid bifurcation also so from uh, skull base to the uh, carotid bifurcation this area and this carotid bifurcation roughly corresponds with the uh, area where the internal jugular vein crosses the greater cornua of hyoid bone this is a hyoid bone so it comes around here okay so that part is the upper deep cervical and of that some lymph nodes will go deep to the 
or around the digastric posterior belly of digastric also and in that comes the jugulodigastric lymph node which I already uh, explained. It's a ton, uh, node of tonsil. Okay. So from skull base up to carotid bifurcation comes upper deep cervical and from carotid bifurcation up to the tendon of omohyoid. So where is the omohyoid coming? Omohyoid comes from the hyoid bone. Then to the scapula, isn't it? So up to this level is the middle deep cervical. Right? So in that comes the uh, jugulo omohyoid lymph node, which is a node of tongue. Uh, okay. And from the uh, uh, level of omohyoid up to the thoracic inlet, this part comes the deep cervical lymph node, uh, lower deep cervical lymph node, otherwise called prescaling. Lower deep cervical is otherwise called the prescaling lymph nodes and they are actually uh, a junction between the mediastinal nodes, the axillary nodes and the neck nodes. That is why you, in some cases Without involvement of the uh, neck region, you can see enlargement of the lymph nodes because this lower deep cervical lymph nodes get drained or a confluence of drainage from the mediastinum and also from the axillary area. So that is uh, about the jugular chain of lymph nodes which is divided into an upper deep cervical, middle deep cervical and lower deep cervical. Upper deep between the skull base up to the carotid bifurcation middle from carotid bifurcation up to the tendon of omohyoid and uh, lower from level of omohyoid up to the thoracic inlet. And uh, uh, regarding the afferent supply, upper deep cervical is mainly the tonsil and the uh, oral oropharynx and the middle cervical from where you can see the thyroid cartilage and the upper part of thyroid gland and also the area are the upper hypopharynx. So the thyroid cartilage, upper thyroid gland and also the upper hypopharynx and the remaining part up to the thoracic inlet get drained into the lower deep, deep cervical node and between this upper uh, deep cervical and middle uh, deep cervical line lies the junctional nodes. That is between these two. Okay. Lies a junctional node which are uh, getting drain, drained from uh, submandibular retropharyngeal and also from the jugular uh, group of lymph nodes. Okay, so also you have to remember the junctional node which lie, lies between the upper deep cervical and the middle deep cervical. Occipital, okay, occipital group. Actually, which is this muscle? This is trapezius. So the occipital uh, lymph nodes are situated on the over the occipital area on the back of uh, head and actually they are, they are situated on the upper end of trapezius muscle. So what will be the drainage area that will be from the, the scalp of the back of the head and also the upper part of neck drain into this occipital and what is this? This is the post auricular or post auricular or retro uh, mastoid. Okay. So actually they lie here, post auricular lymph nodes and uh, what are the areas of uh, drainage? They actually uh, drain the scalp above the uh, pinna, then external auditory canal and also the uh, auricle. So the scalp around above the ear, the auricle and also from the external auditory canal. Both these will drain in turn into the uh, efferents will go to the upper deep cervical. From here also, from here also. And what is this? It is the uh, parotid group of lymph nodes. And this parotid has got a superficial uh, group and a deep group. Okay. Parotid has got superficial and deep groups. So the superficial uh, obviously from the scalp above this, this area also from auricle and also part of external auditory canal. Okay. And the deep group, so the superficial uh, auricle, external auditory canal, 
and that also drain into this post auricular area. Part will of these two will drain into the post auricular node also. Partly it will go to the superficial group and also the scalp above the parotid gland. And the deep group to the infratemporal, infratemporal fossa, then the temporal fossa, middle ear, eustachian tube, upper molar teeth and gum. Okay, so all this will drain into the deep group. So that is around the about the parotid. And what is this? Over the vaccinator, lighter muscle lies the buccal. Okay, remember all these nodes by remembering the uh, location. Okay, so that is lying over the vaccinator muscle called buccal node. They will drain into the submandibular node. Okay, so jugulodigastric to upper deep cervical, postural, parotid again to upper deep cervical. And buccal will go to the submandibular node. Along with buccal, there are small nodes in the infraorbital area, then the mid-mandibular area, these areas. And also there are uh, malar. Okay, so this infraorbital, malar, mid-mandibular and this buccal nodes. Collectively called the facial group of nodes. Okay, facial group. Because they are situated on the face, it is otherwise called the facial group of nodes. Another group, important group of lymph node is the posterior group which lies in the posterior triangle. What are the boundaries of this posterior triangle? Uh, that is anteriorly by the, this is the sternocleidomastoid and posteriorly comes, what is this? Trapezius. So between the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius lies the posterior triangle and this posterior triangle uh, groups and lymph nodes are again divided into two groups related to Two important structures in the posterior triangle. What are they? One is the accessory nerve. And this accessory nerve uh, goes somewhere like this. And also there is a thyrocervical trunk. Okay. So this is accessory. And another here comes the thyrocervical trunk. Okay. So uh, posterior group of lymph nodes are again divided into two groups. That along the spinal accessory nerve and that uh, along the thyrocervical trunk. So, um, the nodes lying around the spinal accessory nerve are the first drainage site from the nasopharynx. So, in cases of nasopharyngeal malignancy, you get a posterior triangle lymph node. Cervical uh, lymph node enlargement will be mainly in the posterior triangle in most of the cases. So, uh, and also, if getting from the anterior group, the second uh, signal area will be the Posterior triangle around the thyrocervical trunk. Okay, so that is about the posterior group of lymph nodes. There are lymph nodes in the anterior uh, neck area. They are, uh, there comes the, okay, pre-laryngeal, otherwise called the delphian nodes. Okay, pre-laryngeal, otherwise called delphian uh, nodes. And there are pre-tracheal and also the paratracheal. Paratracheal is mainly uh, lying along the recurral angel now. Okay. So, pretracheal and paratracheal. Right. So, these are the lymph nodes of the head and neck area which are clinically palpable. And actually they form an inverted triangle. See, this is occipital. I am drawing a line from occipital connecting the... Uh, Postural, buccal, then I am going down along the submental, uh, pretracheal, paratracheal, and then along the uh, jugular chain. See, this become an uh, inverted triangle for the horizontal group of lymph nodes: occipital, postauricular, parotid, and buccal. Then the prelaryngeal and pretracheal, paratracheal, and also the Jubilachi. The two group of lymph nodes which are not clinically palpable is a retropharyngeal and sublingual. Retropharyngeal is again divided into a lateral group and a medial group. Lateral group, the most superior one is a, a node of rubia and the medial group is usually seen in towards the uh, medially towards the lower end. Both will drain into the upper deep cervical group and uh, the sublingual uh, will drain from the ventral surface of tongue and also um, from the floor of mouth, oral cavity. 
and the, they will go to first to the jugular diagnostic and from there to the upper deep cervical. Actually the retropharyngeal group is from the nose and paranasal sinus and uh, uh, the nasopharynx and the uh, uh, upper part of posterior wall of pharynx usually drain into the retropharyngeal. Okay, so these two group of nodes are clinically not palpable and all these are clinically palpable. To get an accurate uh, description of the, or the pattern of spread of lymph node, the description of the levels of lymph nodes are important. And it, it, it was actually described by the Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital of New York and adopted by American Academy of Otolaryngology and Head and Neck Surgery. Okay, and according to that, there are only six group of lymph nodes, and the seventh group of lymph nodes are uh, not included in most of American textbooks. Okay, so this is just for your information. No need to worry, no need to memorize, just but you have to memorize this uh, name of American Academy of Otolaryngology and Head and Neck Surgery. Divide that into a uh, six group, and also there is seventh one that is the superior mediastinal nodes are not included by the American uh, group of uh, textbooks. Okay, level one again subdivided into subzone level one A and B. So, this area. Okay, this is one. Include what all structures? The submental and submandibular. So, level 1, A, submandal. 1B is submandibular. Okay, so what are the uh, drainage areas? Submandal, I already told, and the uh, bed shaped area of the lower lip and the gums and teeth, uh, lower teeth. And uh, the part of ventral tongue and other subsets of the oral cavity are drained by submandibular. So the oral cavity, the tongue and the uh, gums and the teeth and also the floor of mouth are sub, uh, drained by this level 1. Okay, then the level 2. Level 2. Level 2 is in the upper deep cervical. Upper deep cervical from skull base up to the carotid bifurcation I already told. And there comes an important structure is the spinal accessory. So this spine. Uh, sorry, I earlier uh, drawn it as here. It was wrong. Spinal accessory is coming here only. So that is on the upper part of the posterior triangle. Right? So the spinal accessory divides the level 2 node into again uh, level 2A and level 2B. Okay. So level 2A is lying andro-inferior. Okay. 2 a, this area, level 2A, andro inferior to the spinal accessory and level 2B is lying posto superior to the spinal accessory. Okay, so it is uh, nodes of upper deep cervical and they drain from the, which all areas, the oral cavity, uh, oropharynx, oral cavity is already by level 1. So the oropharynx, larynx, hypopharynx and parotid are drained by this level 2. Oropharynx, uh, larynx, hypopharynx and parotid drained by level 2. Andro inferior to spinal accessory is level 2A and uh, uh, posto superior to spinal accessory is level 2B. Okay and the importance is that if you are doing a neck dissection there is a positive level 2A lymph node then it is mandatory to remove level 2B lymph nodes also. If level 2A is positive, it is mandatory to remove level 2B also. But in cases of elective dissection of the larynx and hypopharynx, there is, if you are removing the level 2A, there is no need to remove the level 2B. That is the important thing to remember. If level 2A is positive, it is mandatory to remove level 2B also. But in case of elective dissection of the uh, larynx or hypopharynx, there is no need to remove uh, level 2B, but you have to remove level 2A. Okay, so that is regarding level 2 and in level 3, that is the uh, mid jugular. That is the mid jugular chain here. That is from carotid bifurcation up to the belly of omohyoid. Okay, so uh, mid jugular. There is no subzone for that 
and 4 is lower jugular. Okay. That is from omohyoid up to the thoracic inlet. Lower jugular chain. Again there is no subzones. For this 3 and 4 there is no subzone. And what about level 5? That is the posterior triangle. What is the structure in the posterior triangle? There is belly, uh, there is omohyoid muscle. Okay. This is the anterior belly of omohyoid. And uh, this is the posterior belly of omohyoid. Right? So, uh, this omohyoid divides the level 5 into 2 groups. Level 5 is divided again into 5A and B. Level 5A and level 5B. So, level 5A, I already told, it is main um, signaling on the uh, site is nasopharynx and uh, below comes the a region drained by along the thyrocervical uh, vessel that is mainly the thyroid gland. So nasopharynx and thyroid gland. Level 5 A and B. And level 6 comes here. That is the uh, anterior midline. Level 6. That is the pre-laryngeal, pre-tracheal and paratracheal comes in level 6. And uh, 6 I'll write here. Mid, uh, midline and level 7 it is not included in most of American textbooks it is a superior media standard ok so these are the five level, uh, 7 levels of lymph nodes level 1 again divided into 1 A and B level 2 2, two A and B level 3 mid uh, jugular chain level 4 lower jugular chain 5 again divided into 5 A and 5 B that is a posterior group of lymph nodes and uh, midline, anterior midline is 6 and 7 is superior mediastinal group of lymph nodes. And then the other important thing is the Waldeyer's ring. The Waldeyer's ring. Okay. Waldeyer's ring. What is this Waldeyer's ring? It is a mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Okay. Malt. We call it as malt. Mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. This is... Uh, <coughs> Valdez ring is a lymphoid tissue, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. And where is it situated? At the entry of the aerodigestive tract. At the uh, entry, that is in the oral cavity, then pharynx and also in the nasopharynx. And also this uh, external group of uh, uh, lymph nodes, cervical lymph nodes. So it is a mucosa associated lymphoid tissue aggregated at the entry of the aerodigestive tract. And where in the aerodigestive tract? It is in the subepithelial layer of the pharynx. Very easy. So, Waldeyer's ring is a mucosa associated lymphoid tissue situated in the subepithelial layer of the pharynx and aggregated at the entry of the aerodigestive tract. It is nothing but you have the, uh, you know, adenoid. It is already uh, taught in an earlier class that is adenoid. Uh, adenoid situated in the nasopharynx. Then on the lateral wall of nasopharynx you have the uh, opening of the eustachian tube and above that comes the tubal tonsil. Isn't it? Tubal tonsils. Then what is this? At the both side of your oropharynx comes the palatine tonsil. And what comes here? Here is the tongue. And on the side of tongue comes the lingual tonsils. See it? So all these form one ring. Right? And inside that, these are the, in the pharynx, you can see lateral pharyngeal band and also there are pharyngeal um, Lymphoid calcines. So this is in the pharyngeal, lateral pharyngeal bands. Okay, so this is Waldeyer's ring. Waldeyer's ring has got two rings. This is the inner ring. And outer Waldeyer's ring, that is an outer one, which are the drainage site of these inner ones. 
So from the adenoid mainly goes the retropharyngeal. Also from the tubal tonsil, it goes to retropharyngeal lymph nodes. And from the palatine tonsil, I already told it's a jugulodigastric. Okay. And uh, from the uh, oral cavity, go to submandel and uh, submandibular. And also from to upper deep cervical. This is jugulodigastric. See? So this is the inner ring and this is the outer ring or external ring and internal ring. So Valdez ring has got two rings. One is internal ring by adenoid, tubal tonsil, palatine tonsil and the lingual tonsil and the pharyngeal bands. And from their drainage it constitutes the outer ring or the external ring. So that is Valdez ring. And why this Valdez ring? What are the functions of this Valdez ring? What are the functions of this uh, Valdez ring, mainly protective. That is one, these are the uh, functions. One is sentinels, they act as safeguard, security guard at the entry of the um, food entry, food passages. And because there are cribs here, they increase the surface area also. So that is the sentinel guard, guarding. And uh, B lymphocytes are present in the parafollicular cell and they produce antibodies mainly IgA and also the T lymphocytes present in this uh, follicular cells of this uh, lymphoid tissue uh, will provide cell mediated immunity against virus, bacteria and other pathogens. Okay, so that is the function, mainly protective function and, uh, <coughs> and these are the functions of the Valdez ring. So, that is regarding the lymph nodes of head and neck. I explained about the different groups of lymph nodes, the different levels of lymph nodes and also about the Valdez ring. You have to be thorough with this. Then only I can proceed with the different types of neck dissections in the coming classes. Okay. Thank you.